Welcome into another episode. I'm really excited to be joined today by one of the stars of the ACC and college basketball at large, Tania Latson from over at Florida State. Tania, first and foremost, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no doubt. I don't know if you uh, if you keep up with the WNBA at all, but we just had some wild stuff happen this morning. Are you aware? No, what happened? Kalia Copper just got traded to the Phoenix Mercury, which is like absolutely wild. Was not ready for that oh, to happen. Wow. Gang, I was not expecting that. Yeah, no, it's been a it's been a crazy couple of weeks. Um, but no, especially with keeping up with college and everything. I saw Necka, not to cut you off. I saw Necka right. get traded to Seattle, so that's yeah. gonna be scary. No. Yeah, Seattle's gonna be nuts. They got the Notre Dame backcourt, Jewel and Sky <laughs> teaming up. They played a little bit together in South Bend. Necka's there now. Ezzy's there. Are you somebody who keeps up with the W a lot? Yeah, I do actually. Okay, cool. Who's your favorite team to watch? The Aces, of course. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> got it. Got to throw in the of course. They're uh, they're still the standard. I'm interested to see how it goes. But obviously, you know, talking about you and your play, just got mentioned uh, to the the Ann Myers Drysdale top ten. And I want to ask you what that feeling is like. I know, obviously, the season is kind of a grinding process, and you don't really get a lot of time to stop and think of it. But has that kind of hit you yet? You know, like that you're starting to accomplish all these things. Um, yes, it has. Honestly, I was just telling uh, one of my teammates how like blessed I am and thankful I am um, to be in that position. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I was nominated for it last year, too. Mm -hmm. um, but this year I look to like actually win the award and um, just do all I can on the court. to win it. No, definitely. Um, you know, especially mentioning ACC play as well, too. The ACC has been absolutely insane this year i know you oh, guys yeah. have experienced that too but it feels like every the the, the standings change nightly it's pretty crazy mm -hmm. um, so you know being in that about midway point how are you feeling about it and, and what has been maybe biggest thing you've taken away so far from it um my coach always tells us it's going to be a dog fight um last year it was a dog fight every game it could have been the top team or the worst team in the league so um just not taking any team lightly or for granted um, is the number one thing in the ACC. I feel like it's it can be anybody's game on any given night. Um, and the talent that we have this year is crazy. From Hannah Hidalgo, um, the Asia Fair, Georgia Amore, Elizabeth Kitley, like they're elite players. And you know? so it's, it's like I said, it's a dog fight every night. Every night is a dog fight. <laughs> no, seriously. What well, was kind of like your first welcome to the ACC moment last year? Last year, I would say mm, Louisville playing uh, with, when uh, when Haley Van Lith was there. Um, that was my first like real tough game in the ACC, and I was like, "Oh, well, this is the ACC." <laughs> yeah, so no, that, was, that team was tough. Uh, Especially yet. too, like Mikasa Robinson, who's on their bench now. Like she seems like the yeah. worst player to play against ever because she's yeah. always fighting. Yeah. Uh huh. She's an amazing defender. Yeah. It was yeah, no, I miss watching her play. Um. Yeah, I mean, speaking of an amazing defender, too, I wanted to ask before we talk about you, uh, I feel like K.K. Timpson is just, like, one of the most underrated players in the country when you talk about what she okay. obviously okay. took a big step forward last year, and I think she, I feel like she just keeps getting better, especially on the defensive end. Um, what is what what is something that people should know about K.K. if they aren't if they don't really know her as a person or don't aren't around her all the time like you are? Um, that she's a really caring person. Um, you can go to KK about anything. She's the easiest person to talk to on the team. Um, she's also like one of the funniest people on the team. So, um, I mean, I, you guys don't get to see it as much, but when she's mic'd up, it's hilarious. Um, but yeah, she's such a sweetheart. I believe it. Um, especially like watching her as a defender too, because you guys play like you, you muck it up quite a bit defensively to try and like, just, you know, test out new different things. Is there anything she's ever done in a game or, or maybe practice that's kind of been like, damn, okay, you're like that? Oh, yeah. When when she's blocking everything, and it's crazy. I Like, sometimes I have to remind her, like, girl, do you know who you are? Do you know what you're capable of? Um, but, yeah, when she brings out that dog in practice, I know for a fact it's going to translate into the game. And that's something that we emphasize a lot, um, just being intentional in practice because it does translate. Um, and when I see her have that fire in practice, I know she's going to have it in the game. Yeah, her – she like, some of the shots she blocks are just crazy to me. Like, mm -hmm. especially, too, like, when you look at her rim protector. Like, there are a lot of players who are, like, really tall that can block mm -hmm. some of the first time. But her second jump is what always stands out to me. Like, she catches so many people after coming up the, for the second time. And it's like, you just can't mm -hmm. teach that stuff. 
Mm-mm, not at all. And when I'm beat on defense, I just send them straight to KK. I know she got my back. So, <laughs> yeah. Most definitely. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, in, in terms of like talking about this season two and where you guys started off, like it has been very much a high highs and low lows and kind of riding that out. Um, what has that process been like for you? Obviously continuing to grow in as a leader on the team and <laughs> obviously you're not an upperclassman yet, but you know, this is your second go around. So what has that mm-hmm. feeling out process been like of getting accustomed to that? Honestly, I, I had to embrace the process more than just, like, shy away from it. Um, like I, I've said in other interviews before, um, I've been working on my leadership and coach um, announcing as one of the captains this year. Um, at first, I wasn't really, you know, too fond of that. I just wanted to do my work, keep my head down, and keep doing what I had to do. But I knew I had to um, eventually find my voice, and I'm glad I'm doing it now uh, sooner than later. So, um, yeah, just the highs and the lows, just trying to – remain um being a great leader for my team teammates and that's something during the low times I wasn't I feel like I wasn't doing enough and um I feel like win or lose I should always bring that um that leadership on the bench and on the court how do you like work on that because I think it's one thing to like hear somebody say like well I want to be a better leader or a coach tell you to be a better leader but (laughs) yeah how do you like practice that or, or rep it out Um, honestly, uh, me and KK, we're in, um, this leadership academy that we go to once a month and they have like people come talk to us and give us tips and, um, just practicing it in practice. It, some like being a leader doesn't, I mean, it means different things for different people, but, um, it's something that you're going to continuously grow in. Um, and I, I had to, like I said, just trust the process and just be consistent and always remind myself that, um, other people are relying on me. Definitely. Um, has there been kind of like a moment for you this year where you've realized like that you feel like you've really grown as a leader or mm-hmm. like a what, what what's that been like? Um, We just played Miami Sunday. And, uh, it was a good game. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, before the Georgia Tech win, we uh we had lost three straight. And during those moments, I was just like, nah, my leadership has to step up. I have to worry about you know, my teammates and myself and holding myself accountable and also my teammates. And um, the Miami game wasn't the best game, but I mean, it's never the best. I mean, you're never going to have a pretty win against Miami. They just never go away. No. But I, I had to uh, I had to remind myself, like, even in the tough moments during that game, that I could still be a leader and I could still have a voice because it matters. And I know my energy um reflects on the team too so I just had to keep reminding myself and I feel like during that game and during that moment I kept being positive and uh, in a huddle too uh, it really helped no I like that um and especially too with how that game went and how up and down it was and getting to the final mm-hmm. quarter coming back like yeah it, it definitely shows out um I know from listening to other interviews you've done as well too you've mentioned a lot that you know learning to listen to your body was a big thing this year so what was that process like? Obviously, I know you got injured last year and that that played a part in that. But, you know, what has what does that look like for you in terms of listening to your body more? Mm-hmm. Just being intentional in the training room, uh, getting in rehab, getting in treatment. Um, as a freshman, you come into college thinking that you can just go out there and just play. And I had to be waking up sooner than later. So I just was like, you know, what, year two, I'm going to take care of my body. I'm going to be intentional in the weight room. Um, a bit, the big thing for me this year was building muscle mass, um, especially from the injury from last year. Um, and just, like I said, taking care of my body is just number one for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so has that been more like doing like getting into the training room early, doing stuff there and like kind of working on mm-hmm. like rehab, rehab? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. All of that. <laughs> um, Nicole, our <laughs> athletic trainer, she makes sure I get in um, treatment. Tomorrow we have massages. And then after that, I do rehab again. Um, just to keep my maintenance going and uh, keep training in the right direction. Definitely. I feel like it's interesting because, you know, being in basketball all the time, it's not really something you think about. But for, mm-hmm. like, fans who watch games, I think whatever people talk about, you know, college athletics compared to pros or whatever, I'm like, dude, that's that's the thing. Like, it's not just preparing for a game. Like, yeah, you're preparing for a game and you're playing it. But the preparation is, like, watching people do it. Like, dude, there's – it's a full-day thing. You can't you can't take time off, especially if you want to be on your game and be consistent. Exactly. No shortcuts. And that's, like – that's what I was thinking going into um, this season, just, like, not trying to shortcut myself and just go through the full process, which is getting in prehab re- – like, rehab and treatment and um, just trying to do things to, you know – 
perform the best way I can. Most definitely. Um, so in terms of like, you know, leadership and, and growing on the court as well, too, I feel like we've seen that a lot in your passing. Like, I think you obviously were a good passer last year, but I feel like this year you've taken a bigger step, especially with how teams have defended you now. Like you're seeing a lot more traps, a lot more blitzes, but you've handled it really well, especially in ACC play. So I was wondering what that growth process has been like. Has that been just a lot of senior on quarter? Is that a lot of repping it out in the film, too? Um, yeah, a lot of film. Um in practice, um, like I said, like you said, <laughs> a lot of teams are game planning for me. So getting my teammates open and, um, you know, stretching out the floor more just helps me and it helps my teammates. And I know I can't do it all alone. So um, getting my teammates involved is very important to me this year. Um, and I wanted to grow in that area also. Yeah. So like when you kind of put a focus on that, what things were you like really picking out that you wanted to do? Did you kind of know you were going to see defenses like this this year or like what was uh what was that that process like in preparing for that? Um. Yeah, I kind of knew, <laughs> especially because everybody has seen me last year do mm -hmm. what I did. Um. So um, I try to go in the, into the game. I'm not thinking to just go score 30 every night anymore, <laughs> but um, I still have that hunger of course but also just getting my teammates involved in being a lead player um just passing the ball uh was like I said one of my goals and it definitely has helped my teammates have trust in me and uh I put trust in them. definitely and I think it's been cool to watch too because I mean some players can really focus on becoming a playmaker and kind of take a back step as a scorer but it feels like you've really been able to blend the both and it's been huge for the team's offense as a whole um so it's been really dope to watch um, especially, yeah, for sure. And especially in terms of like learning to grow as an off ball player too, because I feel like you've had to play off the ball more this year because you yeah. guys start a set and then it's like, all right, well, we're blitzing you and the ball's out of your hands. What has mm -hmm. that been like for you in terms of kind of getting more accustomed to that? Honestly, before college, I was never a point guard. So that yeah. was like really new for me last year. And I was like, oh, I don't know how I'm going to do <laughs> so. But I've always played off ball. Um, I played with Raven Johnson in high school um, and she was my point guard. And like I said, I was always a scorer. Um, and now Amari is, she's, she's PG one. Um, she's always been PG one, but um, I love playing with Amari. She get Amari, gets, she gets me the ball and um, that's usually how I play. So it, it was, I feel like I'm back to where I used to be. So, yeah. um, but it does take some getting to a, like a custom because like last year I was just so used to having the ball in my hand. Um, but this year is kind of a mix. Yeah, no, it's cool. It does feel pretty natural for you because in watching, at least, like, I feel like it, it really opens stuff for you as a cutter. Like, you can do stuff second side. Like, it's it definitely fits your game. Um, I wanted to ask, too, uh, Sarah had, like, just an absolutely crazy heater uh, for about – it felt like three or four games uh, mm -hmm. right towards the beginning of ACC play. And I was kind of wondering what it was like getting to watch that play out. Especially, I believe it was the UNC game. Was that the game she had 30? It was yeah, close no, uh, Virginia Tech. It was Virginia Tech, my bad. Um, but, yeah, because especially in that game, like, what she, she took, like, nine or ten threes. What was it like kind of getting to experience that and, and see it as, it as it went on? Um, It was amazing to see that. I know Sarah's a hard worker, and she's really hard on herself. Um, And I was just proud of her. I was like, oh, my God, like. I think I don't think she was expecting to have the week that she did. Um, ne Nobody was, but we were really proud of her because we know, like, she put in the work. Um, she's always said that she wanted to be in those positions. And uh, I was just, like I said, I was just clapping for her. I was happy for her. And I wanted her to keep going. And I still do. Um, and that's something that we talked about in practice and uh, in the games, too. So, yeah, I was really proud of her. For sure. Um, you know, in terms of talking about this team, too, I feel like there is – like, every, I mean, even last year, you could say the same, but I feel like this year, you guys have gone through like three different iterations of your team in terms of like you know, how you're adapting each portion of the season, um, especially hitting this new kind of stage here. What has been maybe the biggest uh, like growth curve or thing that you're feeling out for the rest of the season? Um, I feel like, like you said, we've, we face the highs, we face the lows. Um, and just staying consistent is going to be our biggest key, especially in February. Um, February just determines your whole season, I feel like. <laughs> um, and la I feel like last month was a good month to, you know, see those lows and see how we can get out of that. And um, I feel like this month is definitely going to be about consistency and just practicing hard and having that edge um, because it will translate. And um, just reminding ourselves that we've been there before we played the top of the top. Um and that we have what it takes. That's going to be our growth for this.
Definitely. And especially consistency wise too, like what has finding consistency been like for you? Like what is, what has maybe been the biggest thing in trying to to figure that out and learn that? Cause I feel like for any player getting more accustomed to, to, to the level of play, that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, just being me and doing whatever it takes to, to win the game. That's, that's what comes with consistency and you can always have that edge. You can always bring effort. Um, that's something that I feel like, can be consistent, um, whether you're off or you're on. Um, you can always have effort on both ends of the floor, either that's defensively, offensively, um, just making the right plays for your teammates um, and um, consistently just having that that hunger um, to win the game. Oh, without a doubt. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I wanted to transition to in terms of just asking about your preparation, kind of how you approach things off the court. Like, are you somebody who – or like you're just kind of watching basketball all the time or how do you approach like uh keeping up with the game and, and film in general um yeah i text my coaches to go get watch film right after games um and i do keep up with basketball a lot i'm on twitter a lot i hear all the fans the takes and everything um uh i feel like just keeping up with the game is very very important for me because um it keeps me motivated it keeps me hungry um and like i said watching film it helps me in the game um and in practice so yeah what's maybe the biggest thing on film outside of passing that you think you've picked up on the last year I feel like a lot of basketball is like layering things because you keep learning and seeing things differently so what's maybe something that that's popped for you differently in the last couple months defense for sure <laughs> um when I feel like I'm doing my best on defense I'm really not um and that's something that I keep in mind a lot uh, especially that Miami game last game, I was like, I know like my defense hasn't been the best these uh, past three games before Georgia Tech. So I had to step it up. And I know when I'm good defensively, we're good as a team def defensively. Um, so um, just carrying that weight and remembering like what my coaches said during film and not trying to be on that film session looking crazy. Um, that's been like <laughs> my, uh, that's been my key to a lot of games. When you say that you weren't where you wanted to be defensively, like what does that look like? Like what are things that if if you know, okay, shoot, I need to I need to be back on top of this. What are the things that you're you're not hitting that you want to? Mm, um, just being alert. Um, that's sometimes I fall asleep or I get bored and I'm ready. I'm thinking about what's next instead of like that position. And like I said, um, one of the keys for um, our success and going forward is just being consistent and um you know, taking one play at a time and one possession at a time um, and not taking off any reps. So that's something that I've been trying to, you know, stay alert with. And I've been talking to um, our team uh, psychiatrist about that, just listening to my cues and um, just remembering that every possession matters. No, I love that. That's a really good perspective because I think it's, uh, you know, I feel like, again, like when people have look top down, they can see basketball and they can just be like, oh, well, like, how do you miss this? How do you do that? Like, it is really easy to like kind of get caught up in a possession sometimes. And I feel like exactly. people that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, especially, too, with how much you guys push the pace, like it can be very easy to get zoned in on like, all right, I'm getting the rebound and going instead of like, all right, I'm chasing <laughs> this person off screen. Right. Exactly. And not thinking about, oh, shoot, I'm getting beat baseline. Like yeah. <laughs> it can happen so fast. Yeah, easy for you to forget, not easy for coach to forget because that's coming <laughs> exactly. up the next day. Um, exactly. On something you hit on earlier, though, I want to ask with with respect to social media, um, obviously you blew up last year as a player, especially like when you just highlights in general. Um, how do you handle that? Because at least from the outside looking in, it seems like you do a very good job of handling that. But it, it definitely is a lot, it seems like, as well, in terms of seeing how much you know people are talking about you and how much people are – blown up where the team's at so what was you know kind of adjusting to that like for you um I've never been the type that's just like letting like the clout get to my head because um I'm really grounded outside of the court I feel like um that's not really important to me mm -hmm. I like I said like it is a lot of pressure from the media it is a lot of pressure from teammates coaches and stuff like that but um I try not to play for um you know people I try to play for myself and my team and um and God and um, I feel like when I get too caught up in, you know, listening to the outside noise and the media and everything, I feel like I'm not playing for myself and playing in the right way. Um, because people love you when you're up and they hate you when you're down. So it's like, it's no point of just feeding so much into that. I try not to, I try to do things outside of just basketball too, just to get my mind off of it. Um, and to remember that I'm a, I'm a human being and not just an athlete. Um, yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah, no, I heard that you are big into Legos lately. Um, Oh, yeah, I'm so, actually looking at all my books. okay, wait, shoot, can <laughs> you show them? yeah. I'm, I'm amped. Okay. I just built this Spider-Man one Okay, right here. that's dope. Yeah, and these are some roses. These are the tiny plants. Nice. Camera and some succulents. So. I love that. That's so sick. Where do I, where'd you get the Spider Man one? I've never seen that one before. Um, actually, or, well, they just like started selling them in Walmart, but I ordered that off of Lego. Okay. When did you first start getting into Legos? Honestly, I've been into Legos since I was like a kid, like elementary. Um, I was raised in Missouri and most of the kids like all had Legos. And that's something that I've always wanted. Like I always wanted uh, for Christmas and Legos are expensive, but I see why my parents couldn't get them all. But um, <laughs> I kind of like let them die out after a while um, because I was just like, oh, no, those kids. But now they just started making the 18 plus. Like I really fell in love with the um the flower collection um i i love it um and i just started picking it back up as just a little hobby something just to do outside of just basketball and to No, collect that's awesome. I like that because I, I don't know, I'm trying to get better at staying around and stuff like over Christmas time. Like I've been back home. I live in Atlanta technically, but I've been back in Cleveland to see family. And uh, I got a switch over Christmas just to like try and do something that's not I have basketball. to switch too Oh, yeah. What game are you playing? I was playing uh, Mario Bros. Super Smash Okay. Bros. or something. Nice. Yeah. I need to I need to actually do it. It's on my it sounds so wild because like I feel like you. very much in the same boat but i have to like put on my to-do list that i'm gonna play video games later tonight you know like because i'm trying to work on being better and being grounded and stuff because otherwise i will be watching basketball until about 11 Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. it's easy to get caught up in um but especially in keeping grounded and stuff too like what are you what other things outside of like legos or video games are you doing to, to, to stay grounded and, and kind of stay rooted in who you are Um, just grow on my journey with God. Um, we do a team Bible study, um, every Friday with people that want to be there, of course. Um, and then I do Bible study with the church. I, we play on Sunday, so I can't go to church all the time, but I try to watch sermons. Um, I read the Bible. Like I said, I read my daily devotional before every game, before every night. Um, and that's something that just keeps me grounded, um, keeps me having faith and something to just, you know, live for, I feel like, um, So that's what that's what keeps me. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, it's great to have that and be able to, you know, remit, stay rooted in who you are and what, what what keeps things good for you. Um, you know, obviously you mentioned coming up in Missouri too, but I know you moved very much all over the place because you had a military family. And I wanted to ask alongside that too, like what made Florida State feel like home for you? Because I know, luckily I did not grow up in a military family, but I, my dad is about the only person in my family who was in the military. My mom, I think my mom lived eight places before she was 18 because her, Mm -hmm. I was in the military. So similar to you, um, like what really made Florida State and Tallahassee feel like home to you? Because I feel like it's you know definitely a little bit different for you than somebody who's just coming from, you know, living one place their whole life. Mm -hmm. um well I mean Florida State was always consistent they were like my first like real I this was the first visit I've ever been on um when I was in 10th grade I went with Raven and Snoop um I didn't have an offer they did but I just went up there and, just, <laughs> and um, um they offered me on the same day so I was like oh, okay I really like the school I really like the environment the coaching staff the girls were really nice they treated me like sister like a sister a little sister um And like I said, well, what Florida State is really good with women's sport. That's something that they really care about. And like um, I've said before in other interviews, a lot of institutions don't really, you know, have that. Um, and that was a deciding factor for me, of, um, for sure. And the culture that Florida State has um, is very special. What would you like? So when you say Florida State culture, like what goes into that? What does it look like? What's you know, what are like locker room vibes? How do you know what Florida State culture is? Um, just like. Our fans, they love us. Um, the boosters are really super nice. Um, and just being, like, doing what we do, um, like, on the team. And team-wise, like, just getting closer and better as a team every day um, is very important to us. And my coach, she's a she's a person first coach, um, basketball second. So that was definitely a deciding factor because if I was going to be away from home, I wanted a coach that really cares about me, not just as a basketball player, but as a person and as a young lady um, growing. So, Um, I feel like that, like I said, women's sports here, are, it's a phenomenal um, soccer 
softball, uh, tennis, um, volleyball, and women's basketball is really, really, really um, celebrated here. So, yeah. For sure. Um, I have to ask too, how much does uh does it have I mean, how much does it how beneficial is it to have the FSU war chant in uh in arena? Cause I feel like it's gotta be like to me at least, like it's one of my like four or five oh, yeah. that just like sends chills down your spine in watching mm -hmm. sports, uh especially yeah. in a close game. So like is that something that you kind of even like take in or are you just kind of like so zoned in that you don't even notice it? No, it definitely is a different environment. Um, when we're on the on the court and we hear those war chants, it's like we get superpowers. I feel like, um, you know, football is a great season for us too. Um, it's electric in there, um, but uh, I feel like yeah, it does bring a little boost, and that that's the culture that Florida State has. Yeah, I'll never forget the first time I watched an FSU football game when I was in like middle school with my dad, and I was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen, man. It's <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um. Mm -hmm. So, you know, kind of transitioning from that, too, in terms of, like, talking about what drives you and what motivates you, I always want to ask you, anybody who wears double zero, I feel like there's a reason for it, and I couldn't find one. So why do you wear double zero? Um, when I lived in Hawaii, um, I played on this AAU team, and uh, one day my coach was like, oh, you should be double zero because you play, like, like you're, you're like basketball version of James Bond, 007. <laughs> So I just kept it and I felt like it gave me superpowers and I was like, you know what, I really like double zero. It's different. Nobody really has double zero like that. So yeah, I just it always stuck with me. I could see that. Like James Bond. I wouldn't have guessed that, but that actually that makes <laughs> a lot of sense to me now. Um I, I mean, especially in the way you attack the rim too. And that's I mean, that's another great question. Like, do you practice some well, I mean, of course you practice it, but like some of these finishes you're able to pull off, like what goes into practicing that? Cause I think like, it's one thing for people to pull off like regular layups, but you're, I mean, some of the things you do finishing off glass and with mm -hmm. kind of funky angles, is that something you've just kind of always had or what kind of has gone into that for you? Um, I've always been athletic and I used to play against my siblings a lot when I was a kid. Um, it will be like three on one, three versus one. And I would have to find creative ways to just finish around the rim. Um, I get so mad when I do miss layups because I know, like, I feel like I can make any layup, contested or not. So I'm um, inclined to agree. Yeah. Yeah. So I get really upset when I do. Um, but that's a, that's always been a very like vital point of my uh, my my game, um, and I feel like that's something that I can control. I feel like all the time. So um, it's always been in me to go to the basket and get creative um, and make every layup. That's that's my mindset every time I go to the paint. So <laughs> Yeah. Do you have like maybe a finish or a basket that's maybe your favorite that you've had over the last year or so? Or is there there one that like does stand out to you the most? I don't even remember. I don't like I know one that's recent. Like I had one against um Georgia Tech. I had split like two and I had did a high I don't know what I did, but it just kissed off the glass and I got an M one and I I really like that. So Yeah. Yeah, you've you're the way you split defenders is pretty special. Like that's really hard for people to keep up with. It's been really fun to watch that. Um and then you know, going off that too, when you mentioned like kind of remembering stuff, are you somebody who's like kind of a like photographic in game, like remembering some of some of that stuff? Or are you like more just you remember moments from it a little bit? I remember um I remember, I'm very photo uh, photographic. I talked to myself. I, my teammate was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, bro, I'm thinking about this last play that we just had. Yeah. Um, just thinking about that over and over and over and uh, watching film. Um, like I said, it just helps me um, for other games to come. Yeah, it's it's really funny because I feel like it's one of the things where I like a lot of people would think like you just remember everything. But mm -hmm. I was talking to Tamika Catchings for a project I'm working on a couple like well, shoot, probably about a month ago. And uh, I was asking her about something that happened in the 2009 finals. And she's like, honestly, I don't remember any of the games. But <laughs> she's like, I know that we played them, but I don't remember anything that happened. And I was like, that's <laughs> wild to me. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, it's always interesting to see how people are with that. Um just a couple more things to close out. Like, you know, when you talk about, you know, where you're at right now in your career at Florida State, what you guys want to accomplish this, this year, um, you know, what are you really hoping to do uh, the last month or so headed into March and, and moving forward with that? 
Um, just finish strong. Finish the month of uh, February strong. Continue to grow in all areas of my game. And as a team, I feel like, like I said, just getting closer and better as a team every day. Um, and, you know, uh, having that edge um, is going to be really important for us. Uh, we hope to win every game in February. Um, and hopefully this uh, carries over into March. Most definitely. And then especially like looking ahead for your career too, not to, not, not to like grass is greener or whatever, but you know, what are the things that you really want to do in, in your career just as a whole, what things you really want to keep accomplishing and you know, what kind of drives you to do that? Um, of course I want to go to the league. Um, that's always been a dream of mine since I was a kid. Um, but um, in college, I, I do want to be national player of the year. I want to be ACC player of the year. Um, I want to make an all defensive team. <laughs> so I have a lot of hopes and dreams. I, I can imagine of... Coach Brooke wants you to make an all defensive team too. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> so um that's that's something that I've always been uh I just have always had self motivation and that self hunger just to be better and to um not never get satisfied and um the awards that get too caught up in it, um just continue to keep working and um getting better. What what instills that in you? I don't know. I've always been that type of um, kid since I was a young kid. Um, I feel like I always had to outdo myself. Um, but I do, I have had to learn to just uh, celebrate my wins and um, not brush them off um, because I feel like um, you have to have balance. And uh, that's something I've been working on. Um, Cause not like when I do get an award, I'm like, Oh, okay, that's nice. Next. You know, that's how I feel yeah. <laughs> sometimes. So I, I have to remember, like, tonight, you have to be grateful. You know, not everybody's in the position that you are in. Um, and I feel like um, just having that balance helps me um, in life in general. Yeah, it's not a lot of players who have scored a 1,000 points in, like, less than 40 games. So it's <laughs> definitely a lot to 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 be excited about and, and feel good about. Um but tonight, I I really appreciate your time. I'm I'm really looking forward to watching you continue to to grow and and adapt and do new things. It's been really fun to to see the beginning of your career. Obviously, all things Florida State. Um, is there anything you want to shout out before we get out of here? No, uh, I just want to thank you for having me on here today. Um, I follow you on Twitter, so I get to see a lot of your takes and stuff. So, um, I, you seem like a really cool guy. Oh, no, I appreciate that. Uh, well, to everyone listening, thank you for listening. Uh, of course, keep up with all things Florida State. They have a big time schedule coming up this week, as is everything in the ACC. Uh, and most importantly, have a great rest of your day.